Moving on to the next parameter, uh, that's FU and FULD. That is nothing but ultimate uh, design strength uh, for our steel members and FULD is yield strength of a steel members in a current units. So currently we are moving ahead with a metric unit. So we'll be having everything in kilonewton per meter square. So now where do we get these values? Uh, FU and FULD. Now code specify based on a, a various grades of a steel available in the market, we get the yield stress and ultimate tensile stress of a, any steel member. So as per IS uh, 2062, uh, that's the Indian standard code for uh, uh, material uh, materials for our structural members. So let's just consider that we are having E250 and that's having Fe410 and grade A. And based on the thickness, that's the maximum thickness of our member, we go with a uh, selecting FYLD and FU. So considering E250 and assuming that our member is having thickness uh, less than 20, uh, that's the thickness of either flange or a web of our member. So we'll say my uh, FY, uh, FYLD is a 250 megapascal and my FU is 410 megapascal. So let's see how we assign them in our stat file. We again go back into a parameter 1 and uh, after can command, we have to assign fu and fy so fu by default it is taking uh, 419996 kilonewton per meter square as a ultimate tensile strength of a steel and fyld that's a yield strength by default stead is taking 249997 kilonewton per meter square uh, this values if it is matching with our case then we can keep them as it is or based on our requirement or the steel that we have selected, we have to reassign them. So our FU was 410, that's a megapascal, we have to convert into kilonewton per meter square. So I'll say 410000 and I'll say uh, after the current. So what is does that since we have entered check code, so if we don't click on after current command, then it will create another parameter and at end of that, it will assign this particular parameter. But we don't want that. We want that particular command for this parameter one itself. So I have selected after current and I'll say add. In similar fashion, ultimate strength I have to consider. For our member, we have considered 250. So instead of uh, 249,997, I'll say 250,000. So that's a 250 megapascal. And I'll say add. Now both the parameters will be there in parameter 1. This you have to make sure that this parameter does not go creating parameter value 3, 4, 5 etc at bottom. It has to be under parameter 1. So I'll say uh, select this parameter and assign to view and fu I'll say assign to view. So that was about our ultimate and yield strength of our steel members. Moving on to the next uh, parameter uh, we have that's a KX, KY and KZ. These three factors are nothing but effective length factor. By default these values are 1 but based on our scenario we have to uh, manipulate these values. So what are these values? Uh, let me just tell you what our code says. Uh, so effective length factor K so have you seen that uh, for considering a slenderness uh, where KL upon R that we generally do. So that K factor that uh, we have to multiply with our actual length of a member. These are the K values that we have to give to our thread member. So KX is the effective length factor for lateral torsional buckling. So generally we choose to ignore or we don't generally specify this KX value as what we consider is that uh, based on a table 15 the effective length for a simply supported beam it is divided into two portions torsional restraint and warping restraint.
so when uh, the structure member that we have considered is fully restrained when it comes to torsional resist resistance but it's not a uh, warping restraint as our member is uh, able to wrap since we don't have that much of rigidity uh, with the help of stiffener so we generally consider it as a 1l so generally we consider k as a one value but based on our actual scenario we can with a Uh, different parameters we can choose to provide this kx value as 0.7 0.75 0.8 and uh, whatever has been mentioned in our table so that was about kx now moving to the effective length in a ky and kz so as you have all, remember that this uh, all directions are a local member directions so when we say that if i select this particular member and create a new view for that and shift o so that will give me a local axis so blue is a x axis uh, red is y and green is z so when we say kx that's a, a long length that's why we are saying it's a torsional uh, coefficient ly is our minor direction and a, uh, y direction is a minor direction and z is a major direction so that's how we have this uh, y and z uh, direction we have to specify our effective length in both the directions so as you have seen this particular uh, chart uh, that's a table 11 that we generally get in uh, that we get in our is 800 so when we have a pure cantilever case where we have a totally fixed support and at top uh, the member is free to move then that k factor will be 2 so we we have to multiply the length with the factor 2 another thing is that when we have a pin support at both the ends so that's our simply supported beam so there our factor effective length factor will be 1 and the third case where we are considering that we are having a moment connection on both the sides where it's a totally restrained and uh, not like it's unable to rotate or move then we have to assign a factor 0.65 so these are the factor that we have to apply in our stat so let's just do that right so for columns we have to provide this ky kz and kx value kx value i am not assigning and it's a, a personal practice whether we assign assign it or not since the value is anyway one so ky for our column so here if i if i'll take two views of this particular structure and i'll say new view so here you can see that uh, even though we are having a moment connection in z direction this particular column is free to move in z direction since there is no brace so there won't be any lateral restraint to this particular column so here uh, when there is a support a fixed support at bottom and there's a top uh, without having any brace so this particular column will act as a cantilever column and it will the entire frame will move in z direction so uh, in kz we have to assign for this particular column section a uh, value 2 uh, and in a x direction the column value since we are having this particular brace which will provide a lateral resistance to this particular column so that when the horizontal force is coming it will not uh, go like a, in a cantilever portion there will be some restraint due to this particular brace so this member we are saying because there is a vertical brace uh, connecting to our column will be saying that now if i turn on the local axis you can see that uh, y is a minor axis so that's a k y we are defining so along that direction uh, due to vertical brace will be saying that this will this support will act as a simply support and as bottom there's a simply support as well so we'll be defining ky as 1 whereas in a z direction 
will be having a uh, cantilever arrangement so kz will be 2 for this columns so let's just assign uh, ky and kz to a structure i'll just switch off the local axis uh, under design tab under parameter 1 i'll say ky uh, that's 1 i'll again say after current and kz the values will be 2 and we'll say assign so uh, for all the column members i'll just simply select parallel to y so as i've discussed the kz uh, in z direction these all columns will uh, deflect in that z direction so uh, due to that cantilever effect we'll be considering kz as 2 whereas in a, a minor direction or in a y direction since there is a bracing which will provide a lateral uh, restraint to our column movement will be saying ky as 1 uh i guess i have unselected that let's just do it again yeah so uh, we have provided kz and ky now moving on to a next parameter that's the actual length of our member so now uh, we'll be defining lx ly and lz that's the length that we have to assign to calculate the slenderness ratio now again same as lx uh, i generally do not prefer assigning lx so that's based on a uh, person to person it varies actually uh, in a industry so uh, the let torsional length we generally consider 1 so Uh, based on the actual length uh, the stat will calculate by itself now one important thing i want to highlight about lx over here is see majority in case of the open structures like pipe rack and the uh, frame structures majorly lx parameter is not that much important but usually in case of the pre engineering building lx parameter is most important so let's just understand this through an example Okay now as you can observe over here I have one sample building image where you can observe that this is the rafter and these are the purlins right and purlins are supporting this roof sheeting now see there is a phenomenon called lateral torsional buckling okay so for that particular segment lx is utilized so ultimately what is that see lateral torsional buckling occurs in unrestrained beams when a load is applied to a beam it deflects in the direction of the load and when the applied load exceeds the limit it will deflect laterally and it will rotate in the longitudinal axis due to the instability of the compression flange now see it rotates as a rigid body in the middle section with no cross section deformation now see to resist this lateral torsional buckling restraint needs to be provided to the section at certain intervals so see the flange brace act as a restraint to the compression flange and resist the lateral torsional buckling increasing the number of brace points and therefore minimizing the unbraced length of the compression flange and hence is the performance of these members or flanges under compression loads and increase their compressive strength which is a very significant feature in the design of pre engineering building members the compression flange is considered braced at the places of the intersection with the roof or purlin now as you can observe over here this my my rafters bottom uh, bottom segment bottom flange is braced with this element if i show you another view you can observe that this is the rafter and this is the flange brace at the bottom and these are the purlins so lx parameter is ut utilized mostly in the case of the rafters or in case of the columns in the pre engineering building where your structure is with the purlins and sheeting in case of the closed structure if your column vertical column is also frame flange braced something like this that in that case in you need to provide lx parameter to this rafter as well as to the column as well so majority lx parameter we usually applicable in case of the shelters or you can say industrial warehouses let me just show you this particular segment in the stat model for your better understanding so we'll we so we will go with the stat model now as you can observe over here right so for parameter of this particular segment 
i'll show you now see as you can as i told you see usually your flange brace that is provided that will be connected with your purlin segment so in most of the cases in majority of the cases whatever the spacing you have for the purlins the same spacing will implement for your flange brace case as well right so when you provide ly and lx so usually both the dimension will be same because see your flange is braced uh, through this segment and it is connected to your purlin as you can observe over here so for this particular rafter you can see the spacing is equal whatever the spacing you have for the purlin the same spacing will be implement for your flange braid segment as well so lx and ly parameters dimension will be mostly in majority of the case as as per the erection practice it will be same okay so just keep in mind about this particular segment lx parameter for the industrial shed segment only right in case of the open structure like pipe rack majorly it will not applicable so let's go through the stat model so here i have one peb segment you can observe over here a single frame is model and uh, i i'll show you i'll go with the design part and in the parameter segment you can see my ly and lx both parameter are same so ultimately what it indicates for this particular rafter my purlin spacing is 1.5 meter and similarly my flange braces are located at the same location that's why uh, 1.5 meter is my purlin spacing for this particular rafter and that's why ly and lx both are same 1.5 meter for more in detail knowledge i'll sh i am sharing one pdf in the description box you can check out that research paper for more details thank you